Dear Rail Lovers, welcome to Railways Explained. As we promised in the previous video, today's topic is a detailed explanation of the German high-speed rail system. In case you haven't seen that video, we recommend you pause this one, check that one out, and then come back here. We promise you won't regret it. Now, before we even start with the discussion, it's good to mention right away that in one period there were two Germanys, West and East, and that this division and later process of their integration greatly influenced the planning and development of the German high-speed rail system. Anyway, let's start this video with the concept on which this system is based, and then in the second part, using some cool animations, we'll try to show the development of this amazing high-speed rail network. If you regularly watch our videos, you already know that the high-speed rail revolution started in Japan in 1964. It was when a dedicated passenger line to Kaido Osaka was opened for a speed up to 210 km per hour. The principle of separation of passenger and freight transport was followed by France with the opening of the railway line Paris-Lyon in 1981 for a speed up to 270 km per hour. West Germany soon joined this game. However, the German preparations for the adoption of a high-speed services saw a time-consuming debate between the Ministry of Transport and the Railway Management, centered around the key issue of whether new lines should be passenger-dedicated or mixed. As the state railways obtained a large part of their income from freight traffic, they were hesitant with the high investments in new infrastructure which would not serve the freight traffic. In addition, West Germany then and Germany today has a different settlement structure, with a population more numerous by a third than that of France, for example, on a territory smaller by a third. This is more than twice the population density, which in essence means that the distance between densely populated areas is smaller. Having this in mind, it was thought that quality service could be achieved by upgrading the existing lines and providing point-to-point -point service. Also, in some cases, it was necessary to build a new line for higher speeds, but only where it is justified, or even a combination of these two approaches. Heavy aerial bombing during World War II left the German rail network badly damaged. Moreover, the political division of Germany cut its east-west oriented network in half, forcing a north-south reorientation in what was then West Germany. The West German federal government has developed a comprehensive plan for the entire transportation infrastructure, including railways, with a special focus on the railways that stretch from north to south. The 1973 federal transport plan included a high-speed line for mixed traffic between Cologne and Grossgerau, as well as between Hanover and Würzburg, and between Mainham and Stuttgart. Also, the development of high-speed trains based on the latest research and development with the trademark made in Germany was planned. Therefore, works on the first completely new hanover Würzburg line, in the length of 327 km, began in August 1973. It was opened in sections between 1988 and 1991. Three years later, in 1976, works began on the 99 km long Mainham-Stuttgart high-speed railway. This line was officially opened also in 1991. As for the rolling stock, we will discuss this topic in more detail in our next video, but here for the sake of genesis it should be mentioned that after the extensive studies by the Federal Ministry of Research and Technology, financing was secured to start manufacturing of the series 110-001, Intercity Experimental, in September 1982. The train was delivered in 1985, was used mainly for testing purposes for the new Intercity Express trains, and as a showcase train. It set the new speed record for railed vehicles on May 1, 1988. It reached a speed of 406.9 km per hour. This speed record only lasted one and a half years when it was exceeded on December 5, 1989 by the French TGV Atlantique with 482.4 km per hour. In 1988, DB ordered the production of 82 units of the first generation Class 401 IC1. It was designed to reach a maximum speed of 280 km per hour on new tracks and 200 km per hour on the existing tracks. Therefore, the German high-speed rail system is known by the name Intercity Express. The next railway line that was planned to be built was Cologne-Frankfurt. 
However, due to the sudden fall of the Berlin Wall and subsequent German reunification, the provisional West German capital of Bonn was moved back to Berlin, resulting in the relocation of the German government and making new transport planning an urgent necessity. Then the German unification transport projects or German unity transport projects were prepared, commonly known by their German initials VDE. As you might guess, these projects form a set of major construction projects to increase and improve the transport links, this time between Eastern and Western Germany. This meant that the East-West direction is now a high priority and that it is necessary to connect Berlin with the rest of the country as soon as possible. The logical choice was to continue the construction of the railway from Hanover to Berlin in the length of 258 kilometers. So, the works began in December 1992 and lasted until 1998. With the timetable change on 20th September 1998, the travel time between Berlin and Hanover was reduced from 4 hours and 12 minutes to 1 and a half hours. The Berlin-Frankfurt travel time was reduced to even 4 hours. The drastic travel time reduction on the new line led to rising passenger numbers which was also influenced by the cancellation of the competing air services between Berlin and Hanover. The second feature we wanted to add is that the German high-speed rail network was introduced and extended in two major waves, which were structurally very different. During the first wave, ranging from 1991 to about 1998, all large cities in Germany were successively connected to high-speed rail. However, due to the unequal distribution of these cities across the states, the majority of 46 high-speed rail stations in 1998 were located in only 3 out of 16 German states – North Rhine-Westphalia, Baden-Württemberg and Hesse. Several states through which the railways passed, but which did not receive any or only a small number of stops, therefore strongly demanded that high-speed rail stations should also be established on their territory. As a result, the network was expanded in the second wave to cover smaller cities on the road between metropolitan hubs. The third feature that we wanted to point out is the shortcomings of the decision of the German railways regarding the introduction of mixed traffic on high-speed railways. First, it was very difficult to make a sustainable timetable without disruption of daytime freight due to large speed differences between passenger and freight traffic. Second, the required time slots for night freight traffic could not be allocated because high-speed lines require high levels of maintenance that can only be done during the night. On the screen you can see the two examples of drawn routes in the timetable. On the first picture you can see that it is possible to organize 12 trains in one hour on one track as they move at the same speed, while on the other we have a completely different situation. Due to different speeds, the track occupancy is different and therefore it is possible to organize a smaller number of trains, in this case 5 trains per hour. The topic of the railway timetable is very interesting and therefore it is coming soon on our channel. The different weight of passenger and freight trains is another factor favoring the separation of passenger and freight traffic. Lighter passenger trains can overcome steeper gradients about 35 per mil, while heavier freight trains can do about 10. This permits more direct alignments, which means fewer civil structures. Anyway, the 1973 Federal Transport Plan required a maximum grade of 12.5 per mil for mixed traffic high-speed lines. But to fulfill this requirement, it was necessary to build a large number of structures such as bridges and tunnels, which certainly lead to an increase in the cost of the construction. On the screen you can see the difference between these two approaches. Cologne Frankfurt is exclusively for passenger traffic and has a maximum grade of 40 per mil and has significantly fewer structures compared to the Hanover Würzburg, which has a grade of 12.5 per mil and a lot of tunnels and viaducts. Another dispute that required resolution was the incompatibility between high-speed traffic and short-distance traffic, especially in conurbations. The solution in this case required separation of the two infrastructures and giving priority to high-speed services. But freight traffic is now demanding the same privileges, to protect its business quality, which suffers serious delays because of short-distance commuter traffic. This video should not pass without mention of a Transrapid, the German-developed maglev train. We are actually a bit surprised due to a fact that we are not receiving that many comments on our channel to cover this topic. Anyway, planning for the Transrapid system started in 1969. 
Test facility for the system was built in Emsland in 1987 and in 1991 was approved to perform testing of maglev trains. The latest version, the TransRapid 09, is designed for speeds of 500 km per hour. Also in 2002, the first commercial implementation was completed, the Shanghai Maglev in China, which connects the city of Shanghai's rapid transit network in the length of 30.5 km with Shanghai Pudong International Airport. Details about this system can be found in our video on the commercial use of maglev technologies around the world. Let's now go back to German high-speed rail network and see an animated map of its construction with some basic information about the most important projects. Hannover-Würzburg was the first high-speed railway in Germany. It was newly built in the length of 327 km for a speed up to 280 km per hour. Its construction began in 1973 and it was completed in 1991. Out of these 327 kilometers, 120 are in tunnels. Meinham Stuttgart high speed railway line was also a completely new line in the length of 99 kilometers, design speed also 280 kilometers per hour. Its construction began in 1976 and it was completed in 1991. Hanover Berlin high speed railway line in the length of 258 km includes new line on about 58% between Obisfelde and Berlin Stucken for speeds up to 250 km per hour, while on the other segments it was upgraded for speeds up to 200 and 160 km per hour. The Cologne Frankfurt, again completely new line in the length of 180 km, constructed for speeds up to 300 km per hour. This line was constructed between 1995 and 2002. The line's grades go up to 40 per mil. This grade requires trains with a high power-to-weight ratio, which is currently only met by third-generation IC trains. This means that this line is not for mixed traffic. The Cologne Aachen high-speed rail line is the German part of the Trans-European Transport Networks project high-speed line Paris-Brussels Cologne. The line within Germany has a length of about 70 km, which was improved for a speed up to 250 km per hour, in the period from 1997 to 2002. The remaining line from Duren to Aachen allows speeds up to 160 km per hour with some slower sections. In Belgium, the high-speed line is continued as so-called high-speed line 3. The Nuremberg-Munich high-speed rail line in length of 171 km includes a new line between Nuremberg and Ingolstadt in length of 90 km constructed in the period from 1998 to 2006 for the speed of 300 km per hour. The remaining existing sections were improved over time for a speed up to 200 km per hour. Erfurt Leipzig or Halle high-speed rail line is a completely new line in the length of 123 km. Construction lasted from 1996 to 2015. On about 90 km of line, it is possible to travel at a speed of 300 km per hour, while on the remaining part the design speed is 250 and on smaller sections 160 km per hour. The track is made with a slab track and the line is equipped exclusively with ETCS level 2 without signals, i.e. it can only be used by vehicles equipped with ETCS onboard system. Nuremberg Erfurt high speed rail line is a 191 km long section of the high speed route between Berlin and Munich. It consists of a new line between Ebensfeld and Erfurt for a speed of 300 km per hour in the length of 107 km, and an upgraded line between Nuremberg and Ebensfeld for a speed up to 230 km per hour. Construction of the new railway line, mostly with a slab track, began in 1996 and was not completed until 2017. What is interesting is that about 50% of the route consists of civil structures, 41 km of tunnels and 12 km of viaducts. The rest of the network, marked in blue, has been upgraded for speeds up to 200 km per hour, while the network, marked in grey, has been upgraded for speeds up to 160 km per hour. The IC system carried 5.1 million passengers in 1991, and that number grew rapidly. After 10 years in 2001, a total of about 46.7 million passengers were transported, while in 2011 that number increased to 76.1 million passengers. In 2019, which we often take as representative, 99 million passengers were transported. 
i.e. about 270,000 passengers per day. Due to the impact of the pandemic, the number in 2020 was only 55 million. As for the continuation of the development of the network, we believe that Germany has finished launching such projects. Namely, the negative experience with major high-speed rail projects have reduced the appetite of policymakers and the DB for starting additional expensive adventures. First, the combined high-speed and regional transit stuttgart ulm project is the most expensive European railway project, with estimated costs of more than 10 billion euros. It includes the construction of a heavily debated new underground station in Stuttgart, where the current 17-track station need to be replaced by an underground 8-track station. The decision for this project was officially adopted in 1996. However, the construction started only in 2010, after a long process of legal permission, coordination of public authorities and financial negotiations with Deutsche Bahn. Furthermore, citizen protests and the subsequent mediation processes interrupted the project start, ending after a referendum in 2011. The plan is to open the line for operation in 2025, that is, 29 years after decision. The second example is the most important international north-south Karlsruhe Basel rail corridor link, which is showing slow progress paired with a high cost increase. Costs estimated in 2015 at 7.1 billion have significantly increased. In May 2020, DB estimated the total cost of the project at 14.2 billion euros. The expectation is that this major connection, which Germany designed not only for high speed rail but also for efficient freight transport, will not be accomplished before 2035. This was the story of the German high speed rail system on Railways Explained. We hope you enjoyed and be ready for next week when we plan to talk about the development and different generations of IC trains. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your rail loving friends, and of course, subscribe to our channel. To help us improve our production, check out our Patreon page. The link is in the description. Until the next time, goodbye.